Like with all political announcements these days, the divide over President Trump's Supreme Court nominee is bitter and wide. This morning, federal appeals court judge Neil Gorsuch made his rounds on Capitol Hill, escorted by Vice President Mike Pence as he starts preparing for what will be a blistering confirmation process. There's Kelly Ayotte, too. Gorsuch was educated at Harvard Law, graduated in the same class as President Obama. The 49-year-old judge, the youngest nominee since the 43-year-old Clarence Thomas 25 years ago, strong supporter of religious freedom, wrote a book outlining his opposition to assisted suicide, also worked as a private attorney in Washington. Last night, President Trump announced his pick for the nation's highest court in a primetime address. Millions of voters said this was the single most important issue to them when they voted for me for president. I am a man of my word. The qualifications of Judge Gorsuch are beyond dispute. He is the man of our country and a man who our country really needs and needs badly to ensure the rule of law. I pledge that if I am confirmed, I will do all my powers permit to be a faithful servant of the Constitution and laws of this great country. And as Gorsuch makes those obligatory meet and greets in Congress, he can expect most reactions to fall along party lines. He has a decade of proven experience on the Court of Appeals, being faithful to the Constitution, following the law, protecting the Bill of Rights and our fundamental liberties. If I conclude that he is out of the mainstream on issues like privacy rights, including women's health care and Roe v. Wade, I will use every tool at my disposal to block his nomination. Welcome back to Washington, Mr. Gorsuch. Let's talk about the judge first, and then we'll get into the whole nomination process. Joining me are Renee Landers. She's a professor at Suffolk Law School. Nice to see you, Renee. Nice see you. Michael Sullivan, a former <laughs> U.S. attorney, was appointed by President George W. Bush. Michael, it's good to see you, good to you. too. So uh, let's deal with the politics a minute. Just assess his record as best you know it, his 10, 11 years on the federal bench. You know, 10, 11 years on the uh, federal bench, I think uh, the way he's been described you know, by people that know him best, he's extremely bright. He's a terrific writer. Um, he tries to bring uh, consensus. Um, he obviously has very conservative leanings as it relates to, you know, the uh, the role of a uh, judge. Uh, conservative by some respects, um, but you know, others believe that, you know, his position as a judge is exactly what is intended. Uh, Barack Obama, as one of his solicitor generals, said he was thoughtful and brilliant, meaning Gorsuch, yes. and I assume you could add what Michael did, and conservative. I mean, do you agree with that assessment? I, I do agree with that uh, assessment. Um, you know, brilliance is kind of a, a, well, a very high bar. Exactly. Yes, yeah, no, no. So I think, no, clearly he has uh, excellent educational credentials and experience to be considered for this position. Um, I think he is conservative. I think that sometimes people conflate conservative with being uh, more faithful and traditional tradition, uh, uh -huh. you know, in adhering to the Constitution. But I think on both ends of the spectrum, there are activist judges. So conservative is a label that doesn't really get you very okay, far. Okay, so the only reason I've even spent that time, so we get one half of the criterion off the, the criteria off the table. The guy's really smart. That's important. The second issue, I think, is, is he in the mainstream? Uh, despite what Richard Blumenthal from Connecticut just said there, he said yesterday he had extreme ideology. Uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi said, "Well outside the Warren, uh, well outside the mainstream." Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey have said they're already voting no. And Elizabeth Warren's statement said he's always sided with corporations against workers and discrimination cases uh, of those sort of things. There is some evidence that on some issues he is outside the mainstream. Is that not fair to say, Michael? I don't know. When you say outside the mainstream, no more outside the mainstream than Justice Scalia was outside the mainstream. And you know, the fact that somebody might have some personal philosophical positions on certain issues should not disqualify them from, from being a, a justice of the United States Supreme Court. Uh, you have to look at you know, what does he understand his role to be, not whether or not he has certain beliefs that might be, by some people's definition, outside the mainstream. I think he's talking to you. I mean, is, that, I mean, is he outside the mainstream? Well, I know you, if Hillary Clinton was the president, she would not have picked him, but that's not really the issue. That's not the issue. Is there evidence this guy... I mean, all of us remember the famous uh, speech on the Senate floor by uh, Ted Kennedy about Robert Bork, if he's confirmed women are having uh, abortions in back alleys, on and on and right, on right, like right. this. Right, right, right. He is not Robert Bork. He's not Robert Bork, but he does... There is a, a ring of truth to some of the criticisms of him. For example, what? For example, 
example, in the uh, Hobby Lobby case, which was the one about whether um, you know a, a, pro a, a corporation, a for-profit mm. corporation, could claim some kind of religious exemption to the contraceptive coverage requirement for its employees under the Affordable Care Act. Um, you know, I, I, I know Supreme the, Court affirmed the, that the Supreme Court affirmed that, but I think that that's one of the things that Elizabeth Warren is talking about when she says that he's you know sided with corporations instead of with the individuals who well, should so be protected by the law. Can he just take that religious, the belief in the religious exemption around contraception and say if someone's got a religious exemption to performing a gay marriage or providing flowers or food for a gay marriage, they should be entitled to that exemption as well. That's the natural extension, isn't it? Well, and I haven't studied the, uh, the uh, decision yeah. you know, by, um, uh, by the judge, but my understanding is he was really talking about protecting the interest of religious minorities which I think would be critically it's important. It's a for-profit corporation. Well, but he was talking about in terms of, you know, some uh, 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 religious convictions, you know, that a, a government might, might require them to essentially... Um, Violate their own, violate exactly. their own religious uh, convictions. But we would not allow that to happen in other <clears throat> contexts. If you, if a private corporation said, "My religious conviction is that you know blacks and whites should not mm -hmm. mix in the worst place, women should not work," we would not say that our law should recognize that but those ability. protections would be higher. That's right. You know, we talked a little bit about this today, Renee. Some people are saying this is a stolen seat. The the point being that right. uh, Barack Obama appointed Merrick right. Garland. Uh, and the Republicans just said no. So are, do you have any sympathy to the notion that the Democrats, I asked this last night in anticipation of this, should do unto Neil Gorsuch what the Republicans did unto Merrick Garland? I, I think there is some sympathy for that. Uh, for that do you have point sympathy for that? I do have sympathy for that point of view. And it's very hard for me to come to that position. I worked, when I worked in the Justice Department, one of the things I worked on was judicial nominations. Oh, I didn't know that. And so... Um, the uh, you know so our job was to help vet the candidates and then when, once the president nominated someone to try to make sure that they were confirmed. So it's very hard for me to say that I think that there should be a kind of a, a stalling action so going if, on. But, but even if it turns out, but you're right. you're sympathetic to the notion that even if you're a Democratic senator and you believe he is qualified to sit yeah. on the court and the. There are consequences of elections. Uh, Donald Trump was elected. Right. That you might vote no if you're a senator, essentially for payback or for well, equal treatment kind of thing? Well, and yes, because the, because at the end of the day, it's a, it is a political decision. It's, some, it's come yeah. down to that, and it's hard to know how we get back to a point of stasis if the answer is that, you know, the Republicans stall, the yeah. Democrats play like good guys, and then the next time around, the Republicans stall again. Isn't I mean, I'm sure how that works out. That? I mean, Barack Obama was entitled to make this decision. Scalia died in February. And they frustrated, they essentially denied him his constitutional right to nominate, no hearing, no meetings, no nothing. Why shouldn't they do unto the Republican nominee the same thing? If Pat Toomey did, I don't know if you saw this, I thought this was a joke. A Republican senator talking about what the Democrats are doing to obstruct some of the uh, hearings on cabinet said, quote, we did not inflict this kind of obstructionism on President Obama. Democrats are committing a completely unprecedented level of obstruction. I thought it was Saturday Night Live. I mean... They're in t he's in total denial. Why shouldn't the Democrats do what the Republicans did? Well, I'm not sure the Democrats can. In, um, well, if they don't do, change the rules, they Well, they can. can change the rules. Democrats changed the rules previously. Yes, they did. When they didn't they did. like the idea. For cabinet secretaries and exactly, lower federal court. Exactly. So when the rules were in place that the Democrats didn't like, they changed them. So I'm not sure the Democrats could do it. And, I, and I'm not sure it's the exact same thing. In retrospect, I think the, the, uh, the Republicans should have at least afforded an but opportunity they for a vote, but they, they, but they didn't. But when do you, when do you uh, break the cycle? And you mentioned uh, Senator Kennedy previously. Senator Kennedy did not object you know, to Gorsuch's appointment to the uh, Tenth Circuit. So, but that's and a, if he's, and if, uh, a lot so, of Republicans didn't object. In fact, love Merrick Garland when he was appointed sure. to a court of appeals. Sure. But he's inappropriate. I want the issue of this so-called nuclear option. Though, very quickly, here's uh, here's the President of the United States giving advice to the Republican leader of the Senate. If we end up with that gridlock, I would say, if you can, Mitch, go nuclear, because that would be an absolute uh, shame if a man of this quality was caught up in the web. So I would say it's up to Mitch, but I would say go for it. You know, very quick, I know the Democrats started. You were absolutely right a couple of years ago when they had the majority. Wouldn't this be the 
horrible precedent to end all precedents. If Mitch McConnell says, let's lower the threshold to 51, that's how we get this guy into the uh, Supreme Court? I mean, it's kind of the last th threshold that remains. I'm not sure it's going to be the most horrible thing that ever occurred. And elections do have a consequence. It should, it should not come as a surprise to anybody. The president, uh, even before he was elected, provided a list of potential candidates. He, wanted, he, was on a... he was on the list. Okay. He won the election. The Republicans have a majority in the Senate. Absent him not being qualified, I don't know what, under author, uh, what uh, authority the Democrats would have to essentially Understood. prevent it. Only 15 seconds. He's absolutely right. The Democrats are being hoisted on their own petard mm -hmm. if they lower the threshold. They did it for everybody else. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not. I've, there's enough blame to go around yeah. with all of this. But I think that. Uh, but I think that a president who loses the popular vote. I agree. He won the election. He's president. By, he is the president. He gets to make a pick. But a, in a normal political environment, presidents in that situation might pick a more moderate candidate. When so you that find that normal yeah, political environment, yes. will you call me on the phone? Yeah, no, exactly. I'm Renee, waiting for it good myself. To good Thank to see you, you too. So much, Michael, you yeah. as Thanks well. You. Thanks so much, both of you.